Wow, I feel like it's been ages since we've seen each other, but there was a good reason for it. I wasn't in Turkey for the last six months because I was walking from Vienna to Istanbul. A few weeks ago, I actually arrived in Istanbul after 115 days walking 2400 kilometers so this was definitely a very big deal for me also next week i'm going to the earthquake area and i will keep you updated on how the situation looks like there right now and how can we continue to help uh, those in need in the earthquake area and now that i'm back to turkey i actually realized that there are a lot of things that i need to get used to again because i didn't realize that they were so different than to my life back in Germany. I call them culture shocks. Five years ago, I moved from Germany to Istanbul, Turkey in 2018. And since then I've been living here in Turkey. I would say I kind of got used to the life here, but still there are so many differences and culture shocks that I actually go through every single day. Every day has been an adventure every day. I'm learning something new that I didn't know even existed. So today I'm gonna tell you what things are still shocking to me. So the first thing I wanna talk about are Turkish TV series. I noticed this and this made me crazy even before I moved to Turkey because I started watching Kiralik Ashk many, many years ago before I even lived here. And the one thing that I noticed was wow those tv series episodes are two hours long or even longer and this drove me crazy up until today i have no idea why your episodes are so long two hours sometimes three hours long and in germany they are like 20 minutes maybe 45 minutes and that's like a really big difference so to me i had really trouble keeping up with this Turkish TV series. One series kept me busy for over a year and up until now I still don't understand why are your episodes so long? <sighs> Who has time to watch such long episodes every day? Like please write it in the comments and let me know. Trash doesn't get separated. In Germany every household has at least five different trash bins for paper, plastic, food waste, glass and also batteries. When I got here I was asking everybody, so where does the plastic go? Where does the paper go? What about the batteries? And the sad thing is that all the trash goes usually into one big trash bin that is situated on the street. There's no trash separation. And with that comes a lack of consciousness for our environment. And with that being said, it is even more difficult to then go back to Germany whenever I visit my parents. I just catch myself throwing away a plastic bottle. But in Germany, we don't throw away plastic bottles. They get recycled. You just get used to it so quickly even though you don't want to definitely there are a few things that I just get used to so much without even realizing another thing that we really need to talk about are seat belts my first day in Turkey I remember I was in a taxi and I put on my seat belt and my friend she didn't use a seat belt so I was really confused why they don't wear a seat belt now I realize that nobody in the back seats are actually wearing seat belts but only if you're traveling in a taxi. I feel like this rule only applies to taxis because when I go with my friend's car, everybody in the back seat uses a seatbelt. But as soon as we jump into a taxi, nobody uses seatbelts in the back seat. So this is something that I just don't understand. Why does the driver or the passenger seat actually wear seatbelts, but in the back, they don't wear seatbelts. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And the thing is, whenever I jump into a taxi, I want to use a seatbelt, but it's not always possible because they don't have the thing sometimes to even use a seatbelt. So it's like, I feel like this is like a unbelievable rule that nobody actually cares about putting on the seatbelt in the back seat. So let me know if you use seatbelts in the back seat or not. Inflation. Increasing prices every single day is not something that I will probably get used to easily. Unfortunately, inflation affects everybody around the entire world. Also affects tourism here in Turkey. Lots of foreigners are affected by inflation in their own countries. They're not able to travel abroad anymore because of a lack of security that they have now. But I feel like in Turkey it's a little bit more extreme. As I said, I left the country for six months and when I came back I was extremely shocked how much a coffee costs now. 
And for me as a foreigner living in Turkey, earning my money in Turkish Liras, it just affects me as everybody else. I also think about alternatives on how to invest my money. I am definitely not an expert when it comes to inflation, but I guess everybody knows that keeping your money cash in your bank is not the best thing you can do during the times of inflation. That's why I'm very excited to introduce you guys to Masterworks, the sponsor of today's video. I am really happy that they reached out to me because I believe that different forms of investment, especially when we are still young, is so, so important. This is maybe something that you were not aware of so much before, but Masterworks gives access to an asset that even performs very well during high inflation, and that's fine arts. I love arts and fine arts is an investment that I didn't think about before because I always thought investing into fine arts is just something for really rich people or like an old tradition or something that people used to do in the past. And the thing is that people that actually invested into arts, they got really good profit from it. I know myself included, not everybody can invest into Picasso, Monet, Banksy or other big names in the art industry, but Masterworks actually gives a possibility to invest into big art and actually make a profit out of it. So these artworks are a great alternative and a different solution on how to invest money during high inflations. Over 700,000 users have signed up so far and with prices still high around the world, there is a wait list. But you can skip this wait list and start collecting masterpieces of art today just click the link in the description. I am very grateful that Masterworks is partnering up with me and giving everybody this opportunity. High security in shopping malls. This is something that confused me a lot in the beginning. First I thought, is this a shopping mall or is this the airport? Because there was such high security. You walk into a shopping mall, there's like this big scanner and you put all your stuff into um, a scanning machine and they look if you have nothing you know dangerous with you i was like wow that's such high security standards here in turkey and i think i just got used to it whenever i go back to germany and i walk into a shopping mall freely i feel like something is missing shopping malls and high securities i highly appreciate it and it does make me feel safer okay this one i really need help for that roundabouts I never know who goes first in a roundabout. Is it me entering the roundabout? Is it the other car entering the roundabout before me? I don't know, because in Germany, the person that is in the roundabout always goes first. And the others entering the roundabout, they have to wait. But in Turkey, it seems the other way around that everybody who enters the roundabout actually goes first, but sometimes they don't. And I know they changed the rule a few years ago, so maybe not everybody is aware of it, that actually the cars in the roundabout always go first. <sighs> It gives me a big headache because I feel like nobody actually knows the rules about the roundabouts and everybody's just trying to look at each other, hoping that nobody goes first before the others. So <laughs> yes, roundabouts are the most funny thing that I encountered in Turkey. A very interesting concept and I would love to watch a roundabout for a day because it's just so entertaining. Something that I really value is the fact that everything here is so much more spontaneous. For example, I was trying to rent an apartment and in Germany, if you want to rent an apartment, you need at least three months to look for something, get a contract. There are always deadlines, so it needs a lot of time for preparation. But in Turkey, I remember I looked up on Sahibinden, I called them, I went there on the same day. I said, I like it. They said, great. I gave the money, signed the contract, and the next day I could literally move into my new apartment. So this is something that's a little bit more uncomplicated here in Turkey. It also comes with many other things. Whereas in Germany, we don't trust words at all and we just trust whatever is written on paper. So this is uh, definitely one big difference. It's not always good because this also means that in Turkey plans just get cancelled more often or rescheduled. Uh, people don't take everything so serious whereas in Germany you have something written then it really means it and it's just a very big 
difference when it comes to being spontaneous. Another thing that I noticed in Turkey and it was a little bit different for me because, because in Turkey when you use a stove in most cases you use a stove with gas. So you turn on the gas and then you light it up with a lighter, right? And when I saw this for the first time I was shocked because in Germany we use only electric stoves. Correct me if I'm wrong but I've never seen a stove working with gas in Germany ever. So this to me well, seemed a little bit dangerous, you know, handling with fire in the kitchen next to the gas. Up until today, I still don't feel 100% safe around it. Maybe it's just a mental thing. But for me, seeing that everybody is using gas in the kitchen and has a lighter around, just gives me really goosebumps. And <laughs> I got used to it by now. Even I think I even think that cooking with gas is much more efficient and it cooks so much better. Yeah, this was something that I just had to get used to it. And um, I hope it's safe. And this is something I just have to say and this is maybe the main reason why I'm living in Turkey, but it is the hospitality and the kindness of the people. I've traveled around the world. I've said it a million times, but I will say it a million more times. The kindness and the sweetness of the people in Turkey is unique in the entire world. And I know that it is not easy for a lot of people in this country, but they always make sure that they are kind to other people. They are the kings of giving without expecting anything in return. In other countries, I always feel like people want something in return or they do this because they expect something from you. But in Turkey, They really do this because they were brought up like this. They love to be kind, they love to have a small talk and the people are definitely the biggest reason why I keep living here in Turkey. Everybody is just so amazing. Also when I talk to my Turkish friends it's not only about me being a foreigner but also Turkish people are nice to other Turkish people, so it's not only about foreigners. People are just really thoughtful about how they treat other people and they're always there for each other. These are some of the things that are very different to my life in Germany. Let me know if you would love to see another part or even write in the comments if you have some other experiences as foreigners living in Turkey. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I hope to see you more often on this channel. I just uh, got my car back trying to get used to this life again because I was walking 10 hours every single day for four and a half months and now I feel like I need to take a rest to get all this energy back. It's just not that easy and I just hope everybody's all right and you have a great week.